All righty. Time for our third and final law, um, which is Newton's third law. Right? And this law states that when one body, now remember a body can be a human body, it can be an object, anything um, can be a body. A body which applies force against the second body. The second body applies equal and opposite force. So, in other words, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Right? So, one of the videos here that I've um, got in our Google Classroom, we have two balls. They have the same mass. Okay, they're moving at the same speed in opposite direction. Okay, so equal speed, equal mass. So that's going to mean they are going to collide with equal force. That also means that their reaction force felt by the opposite is going to be equal as well. Okay, so for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The two things colliding, press against each other with equal force in opposing direction. All right, so. Sometimes they have unequal masses, though, which is obviously meaning they're going to feel that force differently based on what we learn on the second law of motion, that force equals mass times acceleration. So if there's unequal mass, they're going to have unequal or unbalanced acceleration. So here is a good example of this with a tennis ball hitting a tennis racket. Obviously. The racket is going to have more mass, okay? But you can see the ball is acting on the racket, so the as well as the racket acting on the ball. So the equal amount of force is applied from both racket and ball when they collide here. Equal amount of force. They accelerate differently because of their different masses. So. The action is the racket pushes on the ball. The reaction is the ball pushes back on the racket. So the action reaction forces always act on different objects. One force acts on the racket and its partner force acts on the ball. Okay, when we draw the force arrows, like you can see here, we have the arrows the same size to represent the same amount of force being applied. Okay, because they're the same size, the arrows should be the same size. So we could put this into a bit more context. When you jump, we think of oh, we jump, we, we're jumping up, so the force must be up. No, that's not in, in fact how it works. Okay, in order to jump up, you need to push down. Okay, you are pushing your body down and propelling off. So the action of force is applied downwards. The reaction. Is that you move upward. So the action of your force and the reaction is equal in size in the opposite direction. Again, the arrows are the same size to reflect this. Okay, here's another example the action of a sprinter pushing downwards or diagonally. The reaction is they move in the opposite direction by the equal amount of force. So the runner aims to move forward and up and must apply a force back and down because every action is equal and opposite so the opposite of her moving forward and up is to push force down and back so block are a good example of this when we look at some blocks that's why we use them because they will provide a bit more force back to you okay so the reaction force arises when one body exerts a force on another. So, in a sprinter pushing against a starting block, the reactional force is the block propelling the sprinter in the direction they want to be moving. So, by having that extra mass, it gives that sprinter a little bit more acceleration. That is the purpose of having blocks. So, this then talk starts to talk about collisions on this video, which I've also recommended, right, for Newton's third law, right? When we have a collision between two people, you can see 
it is a matter of momentum. Okay, it's also a matter of how much mass each person has, which is calculated in their momentum, their force. I mean, their and their their force and their mass applied to give their momentum, which is measured in p. Okay, so you can see that a lot of the momentum in these collisions is actually dissipated. So as they connect, you see their bodies vibrate, you see their bodies move. Right? I'll show you back here in this slow motion video. You can see the result of their collision, the reactional force as their whole body feels that force that's come from the opposite direction. So there's an action and a reaction. You saw it clearly there. So. Sorry, I'm just trying to find this. All right. When running, we push down and back with our feet. And the surface pushes up and forward. So the reactional force of the ground is what propels our movement. That's what allows us to accelerate. It has more mass. The ground has significantly more mass than you. So the same amount of force is applied from you to the ground as the ground from you. The reason you propel forward is because of that unbalanced amount of mass. So this, the difference in this can be seen when running on sand, okay? It's much easier to run on a track than run on sand because the sand dissipates, so the force is spread, okay, when applied to the foot, which reduces the reactional force. There's not as much of a reaction from sand as that force dissipates. So the reactional force is unequal resulting in less propulsion, less acceleration of the surface. So, as I said, you can sum up this force by these key points. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Two things colliding, they press against each other with equal force in opposing directions. The only reason you cannot see those being equal and opposite is when there is an unequal mass that they are colliding with. Because this will cause the objects to accelerate at different rates. I hope that makes a bit more sense to you now. So, I recommend watching all of this video. same mass so there is an equal and opposite reaction right equal and opposite force applied the difference between these two things is that the this one is moving so it has momentum all right this has zero momentum it's not moving it's at rest it's a velocity is zero all right this one has velocity so there is an equal and opposite force being applied the white ball is applying force against the red the red is applying force against the white okay and this is what sees the transfer of momentum from the white to the red this represented by the action and the reaction another way to represent this momentum is through newton's cradle so i'm sure you've seen a pendulum before but this shows the conservation of momentum right the same amount of force being applied again here the firing of a cannonball another example When the cannon is fired, you'll see the reactional force of the cannon jolt backwards. The reason the bowling ball feels this a lot more is because it has a smaller mass than the actual uh, cannon that it's shooting out of. It does cause it to move back. Obviously, the ball accelerates at a much faster rate because of that smaller mass. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to hit me up.